Welcome to the tutorial all about pegs. So we've already seen how to use pegs in the tutorial where we rig the cartoon rabbit. But now that you've seen the previous tutorial animating a layer, you might ask what's the difference between an animated layer and a peg. Well, let's select the door layer in the timeline and then click on this button here, the add peg button. And then if we uncollapse both the peg and the door drawing layer, you'll see that you have the ability to animate the same values, so the X position, Y position, Z position, the scale, the angle, the skew, and that's the same for just the drawing layer. So the difference between a peg and a drawing layer is that a peg does not have any drawings associated with it. A peg can only record a trajectory. So then you might ask yourself, well then why would I use a peg layer and why wouldn't I just animate directly on the drawing layer since the drawings are already there? Well, the best example I can give you is that if you have a character that's walking in place, so you saw with a cutout puppet how many different parts a character can have. So you have to animate both the left and the right arm swinging um, as well as the left and the right legs. So you're busy animating that on all the separate body parts for a character, but then you might decide that you want to make your character move from left to right across the screen. Well, on top of having to key the position of the body parts, you then have to calculate where a forearm would go on one side and as it's swinging back and forth, where it would end up over here. And that's a lot of calculating to do and that's a lot of um, information you're trying to put on just your drawing layer. Well, it's much easier to use pegs because they're specifically designed to make these kinds of trajectories. You can control a series of drawing layers with a peg and you can stack peg on top of peg. So you can have every single body part of a, a cutout character attached to a peg, move them as they would in a walk cycle in place, then you can attach all of those pegs and drawing layers to a master peg, move that peg from left to right across the screen, then you can add a peg on top of that master peg and make the character recede in space as it's walking across the screen. So you can keep adding trajectories one on top of another very simply and easily without getting confused by using pegs. So you might be wondering what is a peg exactly, especially Flash users, they might not even understand what a peg is in traditional animation and then why we brought it into this digital environment. Well, a peg is actually, in the physical world, a plastic bar, um, generally with three pegs, so plastic knobs um, sticking out of them. Two are usually square, one is usually round, the center one's usually round, and you usually have a special hole puncher that you punch the ends of paper with that you can then slide onto a peg. So when you're animating, you can flip through your drawings back and forth as you're drawing them to give that sensation of the actual animation you've created. Um, but then you can also attach that plastic peg to an animation disc table and then attach the cells or the sort of transparent paper where you might have inked and painted a character um, and you have many, many, many of these cells and you would overlay these transparent sheets on a background and there would be a camera above both the background and the transparent cell with the character on it and you would be taking a picture of that character in one position on the background then you would change the sheet take another picture then change the sheet take another picture and when you run that together it looks like it's actually moving you have animated your character on top of the fact that you can do a walk cycle in place using those painted cells on top of a painted background, you can actually slide the peg bar across the animation disc. So not only do you have the character walking in place, you can also have the character walking across the screen. And it's, so it's the same concept, it's the same principle. We took a physical principle and for most traditional animators who had to go from traditional animating to the digital world, they understood that concept better and that's where that came from. So there are three ways that you can add a peg to a drawing layer. So let's scroll down to the bird group and uncollapse the bird group. And actually let's make them visible as well. So you can select an object and you can click on this button here, add peg. Um, or you can select another object and you can right click on it and select insert peg or you can use the keyboard shortcut command or control P or lastly 
you could select an object and then go to the top menu and select insert peg. So I'm just going to get rid of these two. So as you might have noticed, the peg takes on the name of the drawing layer that was selected at the time of its creation, including a dash p suffix. If you want to attach a bunch of drawings to a peg, um, like say for example you, you didn't have it selected properly when you use this button, then you can simply click on it or click and shift click so you have a multiple selection and then you can just simply drag it over the peg and then they'll all be attached and you can also reorder them if you want. So I might want to put this bird back on top of one, two, and three. So this structure, this system that you see here of a peg and then an indentation and a drawing layer or many drawing layers is called a parent-child hierarchy. The parent being the peg, the child being these drawing layers and if you think about the analogy it's because the children have to do what the parents say but the parents don't have to do what the children say. So these things can be worked on independently but you can never move or add transformations or do anything to this without it affecting what lies beneath. So if you want to rename your peg layer you can certainly do so. You can click on it and then just change whatever's in the field. So we could call this birdie for example. So you can also add a peg through the network view. So let's enter the bird group and we see our single peg here as we do here. And so you can add another peg to the network view by using the keyboard shortcut Command or Control P. And you can use the Alt key to slip it into place. You can also add a peg through the module library. So you can drag and drop that in. Um, and then you can delete them either here by using the delete key or also here in the timeline. And as you can see they've been added correctly and they're correct in the proper hierarchy structure, so with these indentations. Like that. So the last thing I want to talk to you about is the peg selection mode and it's an actual icon or command or feature or whatever you'd like to call it in the tool properties panel. Um, but it's also something that we saw when we were rigging the Karate Rabbit. Um, we made sure that all of the drawing elements lost their ability to accept keyframes and that their keyframes would automatically be transferred to the peg above even if they were selected. So even if this bird was selected, its keyframes would be recorded on the birdie P peg and so we would see keyframes here in this blank row but we wouldn't see them directly on the surface of the drawings like we did with the door, like right here. So we used a script for that to do it um, automatically and you, if you remember we went into the layer properties but you can also do it individually if you have this selected. So let me show you what I mean. So let me first uh, hide the dojo and the door and the balcony. So if I grab this drawing layer here with the transform tool, so it's the gray bird, you'll notice that right away it jumped to the peg um, and that's pretty unusual. Before when I didn't have this selected, so let's deselect for a minute, I'll take off the peg selection mode and I'll just select this bird. You'll see that in fact this drawing layer did get selected and it wasn't the peg that got selected automatically. So let me turn this back on again and select this bird so we're back up at the peg so I could then put a keyframe here and then move my slider across and then move these birds down this way for example and oh I didn't have my animate mode on so let's undo so I'm going to turn my animate mode on select whichever bird and do this well now the keyframing is being done on this bird uh, peg layer and not individually on one of the drawing layers. So that's it for the tutorial all about the pegs. Stay tuned for the next tutorial. 
layer parameters.